Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Guru Maharaj is discussing uh, in last few days on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila chapter 22, which is having very important topic, pure devotional service. And today, Guru Maharaj is going to continue from verse 19. And also request once Guru Maharaj finish uh, the class, uh, finish the discussion, please switch on your video when you are asking the questions. Thank you. Guru Maharaj, over to you, please. Hi Krishna, I hope my face is So we'll just bring up the verse. Okay. Continuation. We're getting into the uh, area of uh, the process of pure devotional service now. And we started off with hearing about the incarnations of the Lord and in their different features, but now we're getting into devotional topics. Nice karmyam avachuta bhava varjitam, the sobata gyanam alam niranjanam, kutapunam sasvat abhatra ishvare, at karpitam karma yadapya karmanam. Translation. When pure knowledge is beyond all material affinity, but is not dedicated to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, it does not look very beautiful. Although it is knowledge without a material tinge. What then is the use of fruit of activities which are national, naturally painful from the beginning and transient by nature? If they're not utilized for devotional service of the Lord, how can they be very attractive? Prabhupada's purport here. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.12. Even after writing many Vedic literature, Vyasadeva felt very morose. Therefore, his spiritual master Narada Dev told him that he could not be happy by writing about the activities of the Supreme Person. He could be, that he could be happy by writing about the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Up to that time, Srila Vyasadeva had written the Karmakanda and Jnanakanda sections of the Vedas, but he had not written about Upasana Kanda or Bhakti. Thus his spiritual master Narada chastised him and advised him to write about the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, Vyasadeva began writing Srimad Bhagavatam. Namaste Saraswati Deve Vani Pacharine Nirse Sasunya Vadi Pastyatya De Satarine. when pure knowledge is beyond all material affinity, mm -hmm. that means spiritual knowledge, transcendental knowledge, but is not dedicated to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, and does not appear very beautiful, although it is knowledge without material tinge. What then is the use of fruit of activities, which are naturally very painful from the beginning and transient by nature? 
if they're not utilized for devotional service of the Lord, how can they be very attractive? So here we're hearing about two aspects of spiritual uh, activities that are not uh, focused on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, there was a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto spoken by Lord Brahma that uh, Arunya Krishchena Padam Padam Padantiyada Nadritya Usmam Ahangrayaha, where she explains that there are persons who cultivate transcendental knowledge, which frees them from the attraction and the activities of devotional service. But it is not dedicated, nor does it glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. These persons usually rise up to what is known as the uh, Brahma Jyoti, or the all-pervading spiritual effulgence of the Lord that it is the impersonal aspect of the Lord's energy, or that is the all pervading Brahman effulgence, the rays coming from the body of the Supreme Lord. But there's nothing, or there is no attempt to glorify the Lord. And this verse explains that they ultimately, this knowledge is without any attraction, and those who cultivate it cannot remain on the stage they achieve because without relationship to a personality, one cannot maintain whatever level of spiritual practice they may, they achieve because everything is based on relationship and there's no relationship with the Supreme Lord, only his energy. And you can't have a relationship with the energy. You have to have a relationship with the source of energy. So here, Prabhupada refers to the situation with Vyasadeva. Yeah, that Vyasadeva had toiled very uh, determinedly, and he compiled much of the Vedic literatures. And it mentions here the Karmakana and Gyanakana sections. And there were also other sections he also. And he spoke a lot about, you know, how to elevate themselves from karma yoga to jnana yoga, from jnana yoga to uh, higher stages of yoga, mystic yoga. But nothing about the glories of the Supreme Lord. And therefore, when his spiritual master came to visit him, he could simply notice that although he had worked so tirelessly and had completed a major work, uh, Vyasadeva wasn't satisfied. And when he saw his spiritual master, he said, can you indicate what is the cause of my dissatisfaction? And then Vyasadeva explained everything he had done. And still, it was this feeling of lack of satisfaction, inadequacy. He hadn't achieved what he uh, wanted to achieve. And so Narada very carefully explained that, yeah, yeah you, you've done a nice work, but you didn't get to the essence. And that is uh, the name, fame, form, qualities, activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is the essence of the Vedic literature, which is the which is the process of bhakti kanda, or as it says here, upasana kanda, which is bhakti, and therefore, without developing that level of uh, knowledge, based on the relationship with the Supreme Lord through devotional service, he was despondent, morose, as it says here, very morose. <laughs> you can imagine someone who works tirelessly for many years at a time, compiling and translating and interpreting, interpreting the, you know, the Vedanta Sutras, but only taking, he didn't, he didn't go into the essence of the Vedanta Sutras, he went into the Karmakanda and Jnanakanda sections of the Vedas, 
which is always about elevation to higher stages of material situations, such as heavenly planets, or actually being situated even above the Svarga Loka, planets like Jana Loka, Tapa Loka, Mahar Loka, the higher realms that go above Lord Indra's abode in Svarga Loka, where there are great sages who meditate on the, on the impersonal aspect of the Lord for many, many thousands of years. But because they are, they haven't come to the personality of Godhead, they remain in the material world. <laughs> Although in a very nice material situation, still, they're still in the material world. And as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Brahmana Bhuvana Loka Purna Ritya Arjuna, Namamu Petya Purna Janma Navidya today. And from the highest planet in the material world, Brahma Loka, down to the lowest, Patala Loka, all are places of misery. Why? Because repeated birth and death take place. Although one may live very long within a situation if they elevate themselves to higher material planets and find great amounts of material happiness, Still, they have to undergo suffering and ultimately they have to leave everything and then take birth again. And many times, those who achieve these higher levels, it's all based on their karmic collection. They have accumulated many pious and religious merits which elevate them to these higher stages. But it's like when you get paid they give you the money, and then if you spend the money, eventually it's gone. So this is similar or analogous to the elevation up to these higher planets, that during the element of time wears away one's pious benefits, and then again, a ruling Christian, a padam, 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 tiada, they again fall down into the lower levels, back to the earth planet or even lower, to again take up materialistic activities. So this verse is really pointing that one has to ultimately come to the stage of developing transcendental knowledge based on service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Like that. Knowledge is a light in a direction. Knowledge is not simply the goal. It points the way. It also helps one to develop detachment and awakens the principles of bhakti. But only when one engages in the activities of devotional service, applies that knowledge in a practical way, then uh, that knowledge remains. It doesn't give one the highest level of achievement or what we say situated in one's constitutional position in pure devotional service. So um, there are many processes of devotional service. The Vedas are vast. The Vedas talk to various classes of men who are on different levels of material existence. And what is their goal to take them from the level, whatever level they're on and raise them to the next level. But if one thinks that all Vedic knowledge is the same, therefore, if just like it mentions in the uh, offenses to the holy name, the eighth offense of the holy name is to consider the activities of karma khyanda, jnana khyanda, ritualistic activities to be on the same platform as chanting the holy names of the Lord. And this is quite common in the Indian subcontinent and people who were born in that, they kind of put everything all together on one level. As Prabhupada used to say, you're okay and I'm okay. As long as you practice some form of spirituality, then you are nicely situated. But that's not true because the goal has to be understood. Just like if you go on a trip you can't, you just purchase a ticket and you just say, oh, I'll go wherever, wherever I, the ticket takes me. I don't know. I'll just, I'll just buy any old ticket. 
Well, the ticket is designated in a certain way, and then whatever ticket you buy, that's to, that's to your destination. So if we just simply accept all spiritual activities to be the same, we're on the end, it's not a proper understanding because different spiritualities have certain levels of spiritual attainment. But the highest and the most complete is bhakti yoga. And for Krishna in, in the Bhagavad Gita it says, yoginam apisarvesham madgatenatma madgatenatman mahatmanaha stradavan bhajate yomam te me yukta dumo mataha. That of all yogis, he who abides in me in great and transcendental faith is, is and united with me in devotional service and is the highest of all, is intimately united with me in devotional service and is the highest of all. So the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita goes through the what is called the yoga ladder. And it's a ladder because different yoga levels of yoga practice take you to a certain rung on the ladder. But if you want to go to where the ladder is meant to take you, to the highest stage, and you must take up the process of bhakti. And bhakti cannot be mixed with fruit of activities or uh, uh, philosophical gain through speculation on the absolute truth. Srila uh, Rupa Goswami uh, admonishes that and cautions, uh, cautions, us, ca cautions us not to uh, accept anything less than pure devotional service. And we were explaining that yesterday, that pure devotional service is uh, free from karma, gyan, and it's meant to please Krishna, and it has to be done as a service to Krishna. That is the ultimate understanding. So you find very few people can take the bhakti yoga. Most persons who take up spiritual life usually take up spiritual life to improve their material situation. Their material situation remains the most important thing in their life, and spirituality will give it a certain element of acceptability. So they, they want to, uh, they want to uh, somehow or other uh, be a nice person in the material world with all the benefits that come by way of material existence and at the same time be spiritual. <laughs> but um, one will eventually give way to the other. So if we, if, we're, if we have the focus that spiritual life is simply to better my family, to get more money, to get a better position in my, in my workplace, to uh, have power so I can control others. Um, you know, these are many things that people look towards when they begin devotional service in order to achieve something material. How to uh, become more intelligent in my workplace so I can uh, become more efficient in the, whatever I'm doing. So, uh, all this can be gained through spiritual practice, but the goal of spiritual practice is the nature of the soul's existence, and that is to develop love for Krishna. And only that can satisfy the soul, unless the soul actually attains to its pure nature of loving Krishna and devotion. The soul is, has to take birth again in different situations, uh, and again, struggle. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving us the clear and the most direct process of devotional service. So let's go on to the next verse. Mm -hmm. Tapaswini Tapaswino Dhanaparna Yasaswana Swino Maha Svino Mantra Vidasu Mangalaha Shemana Vidanti Vinaya Arpanam Tasmai Subhadra 
Shravase Namo Namaha. Translation. Those who perform severe austerities and penances, those who give away their possessions out of charity, those who are very famous for their auspicious activity, those who are engaged in meditation and mental speculation, and even those who are very expert in reciting Vedic mantras are not able to attain any auspicious result, although they are engaged in auspicious activities, if they do not dedicate their activities to the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I therefore repeatedly offer my own respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose glories are always auspicious. Purport. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 2. Four, seven. So you can see from this translation, it patterns the previous verse, but it adds a few more of the different ways that people engage in uh, what we say, mode of goodness activities, activities that are in mode of goodness. Um, again, whatever activities are performed, they are material unless they're dedicated to the Supreme Lord unless they're in service to the Supreme Lord. Because the mode of goodness may also look like transcendence, but the goal has, makes the difference. Just like it says that the mode of goodness is the qualities that are auspicious in the execution of devotional service. But that there, but the, there, but are the, those who cultivate Good, the good qualities of the mode of goodness in order to further their position in the material world. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur calls them the modern moralist. They're very more moral. They follow religious pr principles. They have many good qualities, but the goal is, again, material gain. Sometimes it's very, not sometimes, many times it's very hard to detect unless one very consciously performs activities for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in order to ensure that one is performing activities for the Supreme Lord and not trying to gain different material benefits through devotional service, one has to carefully and follow, and follow the instructions of the spiritual master. By doing that, then one can make advancement. That's why it's important and essential, I use the word essential, to inquire from the spiritual master, how can I make further advancement in devotional service? If we simply go on in devotional service, not taking inventory, what is our motivation? We just go through the activities. That may be nice, but it's easy. And you'll see, actually, it's in the 19th chapter of the same section of the of uh, Chaitanya Chari to meet the Madhyalila, that it's easy for certain uh, anarthas to, to creep into one's devotional service and look like Krishna consciousness. And the example was given just like when you water you water a uh, plant or maybe even a bigger plant like a tree or something. Sometimes the weeds and other uh, uh, plant-like uh, plant-like growth comes around it. Sometimes you see a tree will have a vine around it. And the vine will wrap itself around the tree and therefore it will live off the tree and take out the energy from the tree and the tree will get weak because of that. So uh, unless one is, has a clear understanding and inquires uh, what we say periodically from the Supreme Lord, I'm um, not from this, from the spiritual master, 
one again will fall into, you know, fruit of activities. It happens all the time. So therefore it's important. Okay, so let's see here. What is our time? Let us just take a quick look at the next verse and see if there's a long purport or not. It looks like we'll save this verse uh, for tomorrow because it's really, really an important verse. Okay, so we'll stop here. Uh, again, anything that is auspicious but not dedicated to the Supreme Lord does not appear to be very attractive or beautiful, nor does it elevate one uh, in the long run. It may temporarily elevate one. Okay. So we ask the devotees all to come in view and give give the give us your wonderful darshan. Thanks, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much uh, for summarizing pure devotional service. And uh, uh, as Guru Maharaj mentioned, that when Narad Muni. Uh, uh, gave instruction to Vyas Dev that uh, why he is not happy. He said, write about the uh, Supreme Lord who is essence of all Vedas and source of all energy. And uh, as Rupa Goswami mentioned that devotees should not take anything less than Bhakti, which is most important thing. And goal of soul is to do devotional service and it should not be done to attain material gains or material benefits. It should be just to please Lord. And we should be careful when we do devotional service. If any um, uh, other things are being developed, uh, like Maharaj mentioned, Guru Maharaj mentioned wine around the tree. So all the creepers, we should be careful. We should focus only on devotional service. And our goal is to please Lord. So thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, and Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself now. Uh, this is a good time. And also to switch on your video, I request everyone uh, with no single exception, if possible, to switch on your video. Uh, it's a great service for our Guru Maharaj. And uh, please unmute yourself. And if you have any question, you can uh, write in chat window also. I can read on your behalf. Hare Krishna. Yes, Radha Vinodhi Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Uh, I, I just had this uh, thought that uh, lately we use this uh, technique, this uh, bridge preaching. So can we, uh, um, how to say, uh, how much we can use other sources uh, for that than, uh, than the scriptures and uh, something which is uh, directly connected to Krishna. Mm. Uh, when you use the term bridge preaching, you're talking about going outside of the boundaries of uh, preaching to people according to their um, particular level of material activities like doing yoga that's that's kind of like bridge preaching also that's uh, okay thing. maybe i i didn't un really understand the concept of it um but uh, still the question is that uh, many times we we try to put the same philosophy into different uh how to say uh different yeah. clothes or something like that. So, so can we use our other sources for that or, or it's, uh, it's more likely to take the focus away from? Um, well, the thing is, I don't think we need other sources because I think everything is there in Prabhupada's books and his instructions. And along with those who have been executing devotional service under the guidance of Srila Prabhupada, 
they have also explained and give examples on how we can uh, access everything we need within the range of Srila Prabhupada's instructions and guidance. Um, I don't think we need to go out to other sources. And because other sources, sometimes you say, you know, Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharachriki Vidhi Vidam. Sanatana Goswami says a lot of times, uh, milk touched by the lips of a serpent has poisonous effects. Although it's milk, because it's been presented by envious people for a certain motivation, uh, the effects are different. So one should avoid going outside because we are not sure of the, the quality or of the um, efficacy of what is being presented, both the quality and the efficacy. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you need to do that. I think everything is there within what we have with over the 55 years of the ISKCON society, we have everything. We've tried so many different levels of preaching and different ways to present these different levels of preaching. And all you have to do is resource whatever has been already been done, I think. And that's the safe way. You never know what you're going to get when you go out there. Mm, yeah, I understand that it's just, uh, for me, it was so tempting sometimes to, to search for these uh, different kind of instructive stories, uh, which can be examples. But, uh, but I understand uh, what uh, you said. And, and yes, yeah, sometimes uh, it, there might be a danger that I don't notice that uh, there is something, something else. Yeah, Prabhupada used uh, material ex stories to, to present a spiritual point. So you find that a lot in Srila Prabhupada's. Uh, he used ordinary stories or even anecdotes to give, a, to bring out a sp certain spiritual principle. And that can be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Arivo. So we have three questions. Uh, yes. Choose. So, so I'm just going in the order when I saw that. So Sri Devi Mataji, if you can please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Please accept my humble obeisances, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you. Thank you for this wonderful lecture. Uh, clearly explaining to us how important it is to understand the value of bhakti yoga. And I was again struck by how fortunate we are to have come to bhakti straight, you know, the topmost. And this is just Srila Prabhupada's mercy coming to all of us through your holiness. So I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for that. Um, but that's, that's I would have to qualify your statement that I would say very few of us are actually performing bhakti. Right, right. But at least we know that this is the highest, this is the best, and this is actually the goal. I mean, we may, we may be tainted with, uh, yes, I, I uh, totally agree. We are not purely practicing bhakti, but at least we know that this is the, this is the right path. This is the actual uh, way to perfection of the human form of life. At least this knowledge has come to us. Okay, that that is yeah, that is the good fortune, and that's uh, that's that's just a comment. And the question I had is this: that you know, we were speaking about all these pious activities, and I was thinking about in India, you know, very wealthy, extremely wealthy business families. You know, they open orphanages, they open hospitals, they open schools, they do some, uh, even, even they construct big, big marble temples and this and that and all those things. And uh, while it is definitely, you know, a social service, some of these places, you know, especially some of the posh schools and the hospital, they charge an arm and a leg. And so it turns out to be another money-making, you know, proposal. Even though it comes under social welfare, ultimately it's another business 
or they get huge tax concessions by opening a research and development wing for that hospital or something, you know, there's tax benefits and so many. So I was thinking that pious deeds, even though they, they, they benefit human society, will not give us anything more than a better birth and maybe elevation to heavenly planets after which we again have to come down. Is, that, is my understanding correct? That's my question. There's two, two types of people who perform pious activities. Those who uh, perform pious, pious activities think for material gain, which you are mentioning, and those who perform pious activities in order to offer that in devotion to the Supreme Lord. So the second one is situated nicely. The other one is simply, you know, it's motivated, it's fruit of activities. It's tinged by the material energy. And, and yeah, what you say is correct. It will get a better material position in, the, in a future life. But the scriptures explain that that is also temporary. And one has again, fall from that position back down to a lower position, again, to struggle. Mm -hmm. So Krishna so, in, the eighth, in the eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita emphasizes that everything in this material world is miserable and temporary. Mm -hmm. Both, he puts those two words together and in and, and two different occasions in the Bhagavad Gita. So because we are not temporary, we are eternal. We can we can find some what they say relief from material suffering through these pious activities, but we can't elevate ourselves to the position of the soul's nature, and that is the devotional service to the Lord. And mm. only that can satisfy the soul. Mm. Mm. As we read in these previous these verses today, that knowledge is, doesn't appear to be very beautiful, but it's not directed towards serving the supreme personality of God. Mm -hmm. So, when you describe the two types of pious people who perform activities for material gain, and the second category who perform them to please the Lord. The second category would be called karma yogis? Um, well, they're householders, they have a family, uh, but they're engaged in devotional service. So that pious activity. Yeah, they might, you know, they might give in charity. They might do welfare work. What they do at all is a service to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So would that still be bhakti yoga? Or would that be karma yoga? It's 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 bhakti, but it, it it's it's called gona bhakti. Gona bhakti means it's parallel to pure devotional service, but it's acceptable because it leads to pure devotional service. Mm. Okay. If they cultivate detachment. <laughs> so would That's karma the thing. yoga? Sorry. That's the thing. They have to cultivate detachment from the results of their activities and offer the results as service to the Lord. Mm -hmm. hmm. Otherwise, so yeah, otherwise, whatever material gain they get, they reinvest it in further activities for more material gain. That's all. Right. And you can see the difference of those who are attached to the results of their activities and those who are attached to the service. Well, and you see, that's the difference. Are you attached to the results or are you attached to the service? So how is bhakti yoga that is tinged with karma, karma mishra bhakti, I'm trying to understand, please. I'm not, I'm not trying to be irritating or anything. Please forgive me. I hope I'm not irritating everybody by asking these questions, but I'm just trying to get my mind clear. How is karma yoga different from karma mishra bhakti yoga? 
Well, karma yoga is, is you do your material activities with a desire to give some of the results to Krishna and devotion. You're not performing devotional service. You're just you're just working on a little bit of detachment. That's all. Karma yoga is just brings you a sense of detachment from the results of your activities. Not complete. Well, you know, you go to work, you make some money. So you give some of that money to Krishna. And that helps detaches you from, you know, becoming, you know, greedy over you making money. You get a little. But that's that's just simple piety. Hmm. But devotional karma, Mishra Bhakti is devotional service to Krishna. But still, there is a still a slight amount of food of mentality in the activity. Mm -hmm. But they're serving the Lord under the direction of the spiritual master. That's the point. Wow. So the chance for purification, the chance for progress is much higher. Yeah, the other ones are just... All I can get is detachment to a certain degree. That's all. Okay, thank you so much for that, Guru Maharaj. Really appreciate it. Okay. Who's next? Um, Hare Krishna, Diptesh Prabhu. Please go ahead. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Maharaj, these verses are so powerful in itself, these two verses. And uh, I would like to. Uh, First of all, comment on a point that I like when you said, uh, "Light is a knowledge is a light in a direction, but not the goal." So um, it, it's, it's quite a it, it's a good punchline to be used in a in a preaching. So, uh, and the second one, Maharaj, is I had similar questions to uh, Sri Devi Mataji. Uh, I think you answered most of it, but I think just want to clarify when Prabhupada lights in the translation that all these people who do charity work, austerity, penances, they do not derive any auspiciousness out of their out activities. That means it's in relation to ultimate auspiciousness because they would derive some sort of auspiciousness by doing these activities or, or not, Maharaj. Yeah, Robert, he's talking from the position of pure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because ultimately these things are temporary and the results are temporary. So the res with the results being temporary, where's the auspiciousness? <laughs> yes. So, thank you, Maharaj. And, the, and, and one further clarification on that point uh, or, or a similar sort of theme is, uh, so all the all individuals on the Jnana Yoga path or the Karma Yoga path, do they automatically if they endeavor on that path, do they move towards bhakti yoga or do they need uh, a mercy of a, of a devotee to pull them out of that? Well, we have the, we have some, some examples like the four Kumaras. They were on the, they were jnanis, but they were um, Brahmavadis. So they had reached Brahman realization, but only when they came in contact with the lotus feet of the Lord and the Tulsi leaves that were on the lotus feet of the Lord, smeared with sandalwood paste. When they came to the, in contact with that, did they give up their mind realization and took to Bhagavan understanding? So somehow or other, they, they got the mercy and uh, came to but many who are just jnanis. Um, their goal is ultimately to merge into the oneness of the Lord, either his bodily effulgence or his, uh, his body itself, two forms of merging into the bodily rays or into the Lord's bodies. And even the demons get that. <laughs> well, it's not a great thing to uh, you know, come to that level. But again, that's also temporary. That's also true. And the, I mean, Prabhupada also explains how the jnanis, even if they reach perfection, you know, they had, they're, they're, they're not satisfied because there's no relationship. Mm. Prabhupada used the example, if I say here, you can live in this beautiful field forever, eternally, but you're all by yourself. 
Would you want that? <laughs> no, happiness is relationships. And the ultimate principle of relationship, which is the foundation for all relationships, is Krishna. <laughs> When you have a relationship with Krishna, you have a relationship with others because that's that's the real relationship. And you can only have a relationship with Krishna based on service. Yes, Maharaj, thank you very much for clarification. That, that really helps. Okay, Good. thank you. Yeah, these are very uh, subtle points. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. So I think... Hare Krishna, I, yeah. Prima Kishori Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, um, thank you, uh, Vindavan Nagrabhu. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. August to Prabhupada, all goes to you. Thank you for the wonderful class and, um, and I'm relishing the question answers also. Uh, I just seek one clarification. Um, you mentioned that uh, when Vyasdev was uh, translating all the Vedic texts, uh, he was still not satisfied, even though he spent a huge amount of time and energy, but the satisfaction was still not there. And then when you were explaining that, you did mention that in the Vedic texts, he was explaining something about pious activities or you know, good deeds, uh, but not about the devotional service. So, and then you explained that in sixth chapter, there is a yoga ladder and it is a ladder. Like you were emphasizing the word, this is a ladder. Um, so Guru Maharaj, uh, the yoga ladder, as I understand, like you uh, start with Karma Yoga, then Gyan Yoga, then Ashtang Yoga, and then Bhakti Yoga. Uh, so in Karma Yoga, we read in Bhagavad Gita, um, th there's a description in 12th chapter. The, the, if you, Krishna says, if you cannot do this, then you do this. If you cannot do this, then you do this. So in the last... Uh, third and fourth point he makes uh, if you cannot uh, first he says uh, ananya bhakti if i remember correctly and then he said cannot do ananya bhakti okay do nishkam karma yoga or oh, if you cannot do nishkam karma yoga okay do sakam karma so i'm always confused what is the difference between uh, bhakti yoga or ananya bhakti and nishkam karma yoga because to me, it sounds like synonymous. It's Nishkam Karma Yoga. You have no reason to have any attachment to food. Mm. Well, Bhakti includes Karma and Gyan automatically. And so they're not separate from Bhakti. Nishkam Karma Yoga means to perform activities that are without material gain. But still, the Bhakti element is not there. The bhakti element is not there, but it is performed in the translation. Prabhupada writes that uh, we we have so many supporters uh, who work. We need like so many resources, uh, like finances or construction or so many things, and everyone everything can be done for Krishna. So that when he explains nishkam karma yoga. Uh, may I tell you what I, what my realization is, and I may be absolutely wrong. That's why I seek realization. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. This is from the 12th uh, chapter. 12th chapter, but, but it's coming up again and again. And um, So, Maharaj, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I feel like Nishkam Karma Yoga, the fine line, which, again, I may be completely wrong, is like, okay, I'm not attached to the fruit of activity, but I'm still attached to the activity. Like I right. said, like you got it. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. It's the activity you're attached to, and not so much the fruit. Okay. That's perfect. Yeah. You, it, it's just completely. Uh, we see that even in devotional service or devotees who are performing devotional service. They want to serve only in a certain way and no other way. Of course, on the highest platform, that, that is acceptable because they've come to that realization. But there's others who like or feel the, uh, they gain something from doing a particular service. And therefore, they're attached to the service and not so much attached to the, the person that they're serving. Oh. OK. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> So, 
so radha vinodhi mataji yeah, you have raised your hand again mataji uh, yes uh, yes okay mataji please go ahead yes uh, it's just uh, connected to this uh, last question uh, it came into my mind that how what can we do when we are attached to to the activity so is there anything uh, specific specific thing we can do to get rid of it and uh, and yeah. be more attached to yeah. You, you can ask the spiritual master, do you want me to do this service or not? Or should I do something different? <laughs> and then if he says, fine, just keep doing what you're doing, then, then it's not a matter of attachment anymore. It becomes an instruction. Uh, so That's a very simple, simple way to think. Am, I'm doing this. Am I attached to it or not? Well, let me ask my spiritual master and think, um, should I do this service or would it be more pleasing if I do another service? So it's not a problem in itself if there is a uh, attachment for the activity or... Well, it's more like attached to the, to the person you're serving rather than the activity. On the, on, the, on, the, on the lower level, a devotee gets attached to the activity. On the higher level, they get attached to Krishna. As they make progress, then... So in order to get a foothold in devotional service, the devotee is engaged accordingly and given a service that they, they like and they can do. It may not be, it may be in line with their nature, it may not be, but it's something that keeps them, keeps them connected in devotional service. But as they purify their heart from the devotional service through the chanting of the holy name, then gradually they all should be willing to do any service at any time in any situation. Because it doesn't matter, it's all for Krishna. The service is not what Krishna really wants so much he wants the devotion that comes by offering the, the offered service that's all the service doesn't really benefit krishna it's the devotion that he's looking for which satisfies him and part of that to show devotion means to surrender to whatever the spiritual master wants the spiritual master sometimes gives you some service that you would rather not do and that's just a way to help you also to uh, become more detached from your own ideas and to, to offer a little bit more bhakti into our activity. You want me, uh, I want to do this, but you want me to do that. But I, since you want me to do that, and, you, and then I will accept that because that's the best thing for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's it, it might be actually a problem that in these these situations I just uh, start to do both, and and it's um, it can be done to some extent, but uh, at some point uh, time is is uh, is limited, and it can cause yeah. problems. Just like I like I, I ask all my disciples to somehow find ways to distribute books during this Christmas marathon. That's, that's something that I want all the devotees to somehow do. They can do it in different ways and different time periods, but somehow think and somehow connect with book distribution during this, uh, during this Christmas marathon. And that will be very pleasing and also very satisfying to the devotee also. And that can be done anywhere at any time, either even without even moving from your computer, you can still distribute books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these days there are many possibilities for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, we are touching the clock, but we, I can see two hands raised. Can we take questions, Guru Maharaj? Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So, Sukha, Hare Krishna Sukhava Mataji, please go ahead. 
Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much. Hare Krishna Guru Hare. Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada and all glory to your lotus feet. Um, thank you for such a lovely class, Guru Maharaj. And the question answers are amazing as well. In relation to that question, uh, what uh, we are discussing, um, I, I still don't understand, Guru Maharaj, how can we stay without any attachment when we are performing service with our heart? Because the devotional service should be done with the heart in it, isn't it? Yeah, you have to act like it's. You have to act like it depends on you, and you have to know it depends on Krishna. Um, that's that's a certain mindset that you have to develop. That you give your heart. You give your intelligence, you give your energy, whatever you have, you give to, in your service. But at the same time, you have to know that it all depends on Krishna. <laughs> For that, Guru Maharaj, we can think that, okay, the, the results are completely because it's Krishna's mercy if we're going to get the right. results. In it. But we have to do our, our service with our heart in it, isn't, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of the time, sometimes we do something and we think, oh, it came out so nice, but it wasn't pleasing. I give you an example. Sometimes I'll give a class and I'll think, well, that was a terrible class. <laughs> and then devotees will come up to me later and say, well, that was a nice class. And I'm thinking, are you sure? <laughs> and sometimes I think, it was a nice class and nobody talks to me afterwards, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so what is it Krishna is indicating through the through the response many times that when we perform an activity and the results are there to show us that may not be what exactly what we are thinking, whether Krishna is pleased or not. Mm. So if we if we don't get the result as you say that it it doesn't it fe it feels that oh Krishna is not pleased, what should we do? Should we should we continue doing the same service or should we change over? Just try to please Krishna. That's all. Mm -hmm. It's not like failure is a, a way to decrease. Failure is a way to learn. Mm -hmm. Failure means to see where you can improve, that's all. Okay. And what is failure? You can't fail in devotional service. The only way you can fail is give up. Mm. But mm -hmm. when we do something, we should do it with attention and as much devotion as we can uh, develop. Mm. Okay, Guru. Thank you so much. That helps a lot. Yeah, that's all. Put your heart into it and offer it to Krishna. That's all. Okay. There's a story where one, one lady was cooking chapatis for Prabhupada. And Prabhupada would always like the chapatis hot off the fire, you know. And uh, they would, so she was cooking them, but she was, uh, burning them <laughs> she had these tongs and the tongs were making these um, black marks and putting holes in it but Prabhupada was eating one chapati after another and so the devotees were inquiring and Prabhupada said yes she cooks very nicely so Prabhupada was tasting the bhakti like that it wasn't so much seeing the expertise Okay. So she was trying to make it nice, but it just wasn't happening. Mm. And she was explaining, you know, she was putting her devotion into it, thinking, I want to make it nice for Prabhupada, but it just wasn't happening. But because she had that desire to please Prabhupada, um, Prabhupada accepted her service. Mm. Just like Prem Kishori, she used to cook dal for me every day when I would sit at her house 
when I was, wasn't feeling so good. And every day she would say, oh, the dal is no good. And I would eat the whole thing. <laughs> and then she would make it the next day and she would say the same thing. It's not so good. And I eat it anyway. <laughs> so yeah, she kept thinking it was never, never up to the standard. And at the same time, I was thinking, this is the best doll I've ever had. <laughs> so your kind so you, you can't really determine so much by the results. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she would she would cook some doll one day and then I wouldn't eat it that day. And then it would be left over for the next day. And she'd say, I'll cook you some fresh one. I'd say, no, give me the doll from yesterday. <laughs> and she would argue with me and say, no, I can't give you that. And I would say, yeah, I liked it. <laughs> Don't make fresh doll. <laughs> and the punchline was, <laughs> if you will not give me the doll from yesterday, then I will not eat the doll. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Mataji, you are so lucky you got such a good chance to serve Guru Maharaj. Oh, she did. She's fantastic. So I am, very, I am very lucky. Thank you. I'm waiting for the luck again, uh, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> and all of you. Us as well, please. <laughs> I don't want to give you so much work. I gave you so much work when I was there. Guru Maharaj, you should give some service to me as well. You, I was there. We had the initiations at your house. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> One more. That's nice. I'm still waiting to go to Ireland. <laughs> that's my next. That's on my list sometime in the future. Trying to get to Ireland. <laughs> okay. okay, so thank you devotees and we'll see you all uh, tomorrow. This chapter, I, I find it's very, uh, it, it makes you think. It's a very good chapter for uh, going deeper into the subtle, more subtle aspects of devotional service. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. So tomorrow, as Guru Maharaj said, we'll continue from next verse 22, um, which is again continuation of pure devotional service. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Anant Koti Vaishnav Vrind ki jai. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 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 Okay. Thanks. Thank you.